Hi, I relatively often get asked how I stay motivated, how I learn new things and which hints I can share when it comes to how you can be more productive or learn more things. So in this video and also in an article which you find below the video in written form, I will share some of the techniques that work for me and that I found to be most helpful when it comes to growing, learning and staying motivated. So hopefully it helps you as well. So I came up with seven techniques where I felt like they were most helpful to me. Now, of course, if you got other techniques or hacks or ideas besides the what I'm going to share here, please share them with me as well, either in the comments of the video or in our brand new Academine community to which you also find a link below the video. Well, and speaking of a community, this kind of already is my first technique of the seven techniques I want to share here find a learning partner or find a community online or offline who's there for you, who walks that way together with you. Now, what do I mean with that? Well, it obviously helps if you're not alone. I learned web development on my own. I was the only one interested in it in my entire circle of friends and in my family. And when I started working it, the internet wasn't that much of a thing, it was just coming up and we didn't really have a good access to it at home. So when I learned it, I learned it with books. I learned it by looking up the source code of some of the websites I did visit. And well, yeah, I learned it on my own. Now over time, of course, as time went by, uh, things changed and I found people who are interested in similar things. And, and actually that is when I was able to learn way faster. The same for this, this business I built. When I started working off as a freelancer and also doing these online tutorials, I did it on my own. Now, of course, I'm doing it together with Manuel and having a partner to whom you can talk, with whom you can share doubts and also successes is really helpful. Helpful from a motivational perspective, but also helpful regarding a technical perspective. Now, of course, it helps if you have like a girlfriend, boyfriend, family, friends who might not be interested in the topic you're learning or you're working on. If they can push you, if you're lacking motivation, if you feel like yeah, you're, you don't want to continue, if you're not sure if you're still on the right path. In that scenario, anyone to who you relate can help you. And that's great. And you should absolutely have people like that around you. But it also is important to find people who share a similar passion for the actual topic you're learning. Because then you don't just have people cheering you up if you're down, but then you also have people with whom you can talk about technical issues, new ideas, check and validate if you understood something correctly, share things you built or problems you're facing. So you got a brand new level of discussion, a brand new area where you can grow and simply exchange experiences. And that's also one of the main reasons why we started our Academind community. Of course, that's not the only place where you can find people to learn. But we hope it's, it's a great place where you feel welcome and where you will definitely find a lot like-minded people interested in the topics we're covering here on this YouTube channel and also in our courses. So I definitely want to invite you to join this community. It's totally free, hosted on Discord, because chances are that there you can find learning partners with whom you can learn in tandem so that you can grow together and basically check each other's results and knowledge, or that you can share doubts there and also share successes. We all need to share successes as well. We want to show what we built. We want to show what we achieved. That motivates us, but it also can be very motivating to others to see how others are growing and what others are achieving. So find a community, find learning partners, possibly in our Academine community, link below the video, of course, or somewhere else and then stick to it. Work together with your partners. Don't let them down. Continue your path and you will grow a lot. Now, that's the social aspect of learning and growing. And I would argue it's the most important one because no one, and I really think no one, absolutely no one, 
can get things done and can grow forever if you're on your own. So definitely take this seriously. However, it's just one of the seven techniques or one of the seven things that matter. Another very important thing that matters is realistic time management. Now you can find plenty of resources about time management and I don't want to dive into concrete techniques on how to manage your time. I want you to be realistic because there, there is a phrase or there are different variations of that phrase which basically says people tend to overestimate what they can get done in a day and they underestimate what they can get done in a year. And it's very, very true for everyone, including me, including you. People really often find themselves in spots where you plan to do this and that and then this other thing tomorrow and turns out you were only able to get one of the three things done. Now the result is you're frustrated, you go to bed in a, in a bad mood and you're not happy and you feel like you're lacking or you're, you're simply not progressing. Now on the same hand, if you look back where you've been a year ago, chances are that you will think, whoa, quite a lot of things changed. I'm now able to do this and that and that out that too. And these are all things which I wasn't able to do a year ago or which I didn't have back then. Bring that back into your memory and set realistic goals. I'll come back to the short term thing. Regarding the long term, definitely plan more than you think you can get done. Be very ambitious regarding your long term goals. In a year from now, it will be a totally different world. So definitely be highly optimistic regarding what you will be able to do by then. You want to be able to build websites, know this programming language and learn Spanish by them? Well, that's your goal. It is doable. Of course, you're not going to be a master in everything. By the way, you never are a master in everything any time in life, but you will be able to achieve it. So be ambitious there. Now, when it comes to short term goals, so what you want to get done tomorrow or in a week or today, be realistic, maybe even a bit pessimistic, but that would be the wrong word. You shouldn't think that you're too bad to get something done. You just should be realistic regarding the time you have available. If you're writing down a to-do list for tomorrow and you have five tasks on it, maybe consider crossing off the two least important tasks there because chances are you'll only be able to get three things done anyways. Also, when you think about the near term future, let's say you have a goal, you want to be able to build a basic online shop uh, within the next week, maybe just double that time frame because it just turns out that we are too optimistic in the short term. So force yourself to take longer than you think you do. If you then don't need the time, great, you get a motivational push. If you do need it, great, because that was your time frame. So that really can help you be more realistic. Simply force yourself to, to take longer or to expect that you take longer than you would think you do. Also, when we talk about short term goals and things you want to get done, split your bigger goals into smaller ones. Now, that's obviously not a new technique. You probably heard that before, but it is important. You want to build a basic online shop in, let's say, two weeks, right? So from today to today in two weeks, you want to have that basic online shop done. You generally know the base uh, languages and frameworks you need for that, but you're not an expert and there definitely is stuff you still need to learn. Well, split it into smaller goals and write down a goal for every day. Check if that goal is realistic and then check if together they add up to your overall goal. If they don't, you might need a longer time frame. If they do, well then go for it and try to achieve it. But again, for these smaller everyday goals, try to be realistic. Think back about the last time you learned something similar. How long did that take you? Because we humans tend to forget things we don't like to remember, right? The last time we learned a new framework, it maybe took us, let's say, two months. Now, why would it only take us one month now? You should be very realistic there. Think about the past, split your goals and double your expected time horizons. 
with that you hopefully have some techniques that keep you motivated in the short term too and lead to more realistic goals. Now especially when learning new things, it can also sometimes be annoying that you don't really see your progress. Well maybe some progress bar is filling up an online course, but that might not be the case for all platforms where you're taking courses. It's definitely not the case if you're reading tutorials or online documentation. It's not really the case for YouTube. So you don't really see your progress. Now a great thing that works really well for me is that if I'm learning something new, I use the things I learn as early as possible. I don't look at, at a problem or at a language I want to learn as a whole, but instead I start learning it. Let's say I start learning Vue.js, a JavaScript framework, and as soon as I'm able to make my first button work where I click on it and then something happens on a page, I'll stop learning for now and just use it. I'll just spin up a basic project and use what I just learned and try different variations there. And I try to do things which I haven't learned yet. This is extremely motivating because by doing this, I see what I learned. Another nice side effect, of course, is that you practice what you learned and that makes the learning experience much better and more intense. You will remember things way better if you actually use them instead of just reading about them. So using your knowledge early and often whilst you are learning something is extremely important. Of course, two months later, you'll come back and look at your early steps and say, what did I think there? This is bad code. But does this matter? It does not. This does absolutely not matter. The future does not matter. You're living today and you want to make sure that you stay motivated and that you see your progress and that you get the most out of your, your learning resource. And you do that by building stuff, by practicing and by using what you learned. You want to show off to yourself. You want to show yourself what you just gained and what cool stuff you're able to do. This is really, really important and I can only recommend that you do this and that you use your knowledge as often and early as possible. So you got your goals, you got your learning community and yet you wake up or you come back after lunch and you don't really feel like working right now. You go to Instagram and check what's going on there. You have a look at Twitter. You check out that latest YouTube kitten video and all of a sudden two hours passed and you got nothing done. This is highly frustrating, but the good thing is this happens to all of us. Now, how can you battle this? How can you make sure that you get stuff done, that you stay motivated, that you work on the things you want to work on theoretically? Well, there is this five minute trick and you also find different variations of this technique as well. The idea is simple. You set the goal that you want to work on that specific thing you need to get done for only five minutes or 20 minutes, but for a very short time frame, that matters. Now, then you start doing what you want to do, continue reading that tutorial, continue with that online course, continue writing code, continue learning to draw, whatever it is. And after 20 minutes, you stop. You set a timer and you stop. Or do you? The cool thing about this technique is that you have the motivation to start working because you know it'll be only for 20 minutes or 5 minutes. So thereafter you can do something fun. You can watch that YouTube video you wanted to watch. But for these 5 minutes you're going to work on the task. The advantage is that you'll not see the big pile of work ahead of you but that you only see a short time frame for which you need to work on something. Now, chances are that once you start working on it, you will get into kind of a flow state and you will continue working once the time is up. And that's of course great. You shouldn't force yourself to quit after these five or 20 minutes, but you should be fine doing so if you don't enter such a flow state. If you just can't get motivated today, if you can't continue working here, well, then just take a break, take a nap, go for a walk, read a book or watch that YouTube video and try the same technique in an hour or so. Eventually it will work and it will be a great way of getting things done and working on the things you want to work on. So I now already shared a couple of techniques and tricks and things that work for me. Now, one thing that can really hit your motivation or that can be problematic is if you compare yourself to others. Now, if you're learning something or if you're working on something, if you're building something and you have a look at others, 
chances are that you will feel bad. Why? Because everyone, literally everyone, will only show what works for them. They will only tell you about their successes, that they put in 16 hours yesterday, that they never take breaks, that they learn every day of the week, and so on. And nobody does that. So are people lying here? Well, lie is a hard word. You could of course say it, but I wouldn't say that people are lying. Instead, I would say everyone just wants to share things that makes them feel good. If you talk to strangers about what you do and how you feel, typically you're also only going to share the things that work for you, where you're good at, where you're happy with. You're not going to share too many failures or the days where the struggle was real and you couldn't get things done. That doesn't happen as often. And therefore it's especially important to really keep in mind and force yourself to remember that that everyone is having bad days, that nobody is productive for 16 hours every day, seven days a week, that nobody is going to work all the time and that nobody is going to have successes all the time. Everyone will have failures, everyone will have phases where motivation is lacking and no one is going to share it with you or at least that's not going to happen very often. Now we've all been there though, of course, it's true for me, not every day is a day where I put in 16 hours, motivated all the day. No, everyone has days where motivation is an issue, where you're not as productive as you want to be. And that is absolutely fine. Keep that in mind. Don't get frustrated because you're having a bad day, because you're not able to get the things done you want to get done. That is totally normal. We've all been there. We will all be there. We just have to keep in mind that this is the case for everyone because otherwise it's super frustrating. And with that, here's my last suggestion or my last idea. And that's actually a bit of an ironic suggestion or technique. Don't read too many motivational guides. And the funny thing is, of course, this year, this video and the article below the video, of course, is kind of a motivational life hacky guide. And whilst I hope it was helpful, you shouldn't read or watch too many of those. Now, why? Because you can get interesting and helpful techniques out of them. Like hopefully you got some interesting things out of this one here, like the five minute trick and so on. But as you read more and more such guides, you will see a pattern because things like that five minute trick are things you will find in many guides. And the only thing, the only reason why you then read these guides or why you watch such videos is then that you feel better. It's the same effect as when you sign up for the gym but you never go there. You feel better because you signed up, but you won't be able to achieve your goals. You're not going to get fitter or slimmer by just signing up for the gym. And it's the same for learning, growing and being productive. Of course, it feels good to read such a guide or watch such a video. And yes, you can get useful stuff out of it, but you need to get things done. You need to go back to your desk and continue learning or working with the techniques that you learned here but also simply by, by doing it and by not checking out 10 other guides or ideas. This is just uh, my take on that. Of course, it's totally up to you what works best for you here, but I have found that I sometimes need such guides or that you can get interesting things out of them, but it's then also good to just read one or two and then go back to work and use some of these techniques because ultimately you have to do something to get stuff done pretty obvious, I guess, right? And that's it. These are my ideas, my techniques, my thoughts on the topic. Now, obviously, there, there is more you, you can do, more you can explore, and you might have totally different techniques and ideas that work for you. So please share them. Please share what you do to overcome a lack of motivation, to stay motivated, how you learn the most, how you grow the most, and so on. Share it below the video in the comments or of course in the community I mentioned. I would really be happy to welcome you there. We want to build an amazing friendly place where everyone can learn and grow together. And if that sounds intriguing to you, you're more than welcome. It's totally free, will be free forever. And there you can share such ideas as well and maybe also find your learning partner or partners and have the community that pushes you. 
So with that, I hope the video was helpful and I hope I see you in future videos too. Bye.